Oh, yes, yeah, Samantha rock. is getting married, our beautiful model. Congratulations. What in two weeks. Doing? So, yes, and you, you'll be doing her makeup. I'll be doing her makeup. You'll be doing it the proper way, not some of these not mishaps, the mishaps that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> Poor girl, I'm going to send her to work just like this. <laughs> so, earlier mishap. we talked about eyeshadow, the eyeshadow that you did her other eye, and it looks uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, her liner, we made sure we finished it all up. We didn't want her lopsided, um, which that could be a beauty mishap, going without with one eye. Definitely. You never know. I don't know who would do that, but yeah. maybe you forget. You, get you never know. Later right. on. <laughs> Stress. Um, uh, so what's first? You know, first is, I think, foundation. Uh, I think that's what I have the most battles with with clients. Mm -hmm. They believe that they need to get color from their foundation or they need more coverage than they really need. And if they really just pick the correct foundation for their skin type. That's the hardest part, though. And it is. And that's why even if you don't purchase your, your uh, foundation from a place that you go in and get help with, you need to at least have somebody match you. So you kind of know where you're going okay. with that. Um, that way you pick out the right color and maybe the right consistency because you may buy something that is for dry skin when you're an extremely oily person and it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. um, Sam actually happens to be pretty oily, so colors tend to oxidize on her. Mm -hmm. They change to sometimes they'll turn darker, sometimes they'll turn lighter. So you kind of have to be really careful. So with her, you know, we want to definitely try a couple colors. You never want to go too light, especially when you're oily, because it'll tend to look. So you're just testing this out. See, see now this is how you would test it. Match. You want to test it along. So not on your hand? No, definitely okay. not on your hand. Your hands are going to be different color than your Well, face. that's what I was always told. Well, it, that's wrong. Definitely. That's a mishap. Well, that's, that was a mishap. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, we use sunscreen on our face a lot. Whether it's in your foundation or in your uh, moisturizer, mm -hmm. you tend to not be as dark on your face as you would be on your hands, arms, here on the neck. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So definitely test it right on the face. See, this one blended right in. We didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be her perfect match. But we want to show something that's going to be a little bit too light so you can know what you're looking for. So this one's definitely going to be too light. See how we can see yeah. this? Oh, and yeah. you can see That's how really it turns a little ch <laughs> chalky and just not quite her color. Um, you know, and if you have a little bit of a deeper skin tone, doing it on the jawline's not going to work. You would want to do it right in here on the cheek. Sorry about that. <laughs> right on the cheek because that's where you tend to have your most even pigment. Okay. And that way everything else will match nicely. Okay. But as the summer goes along too and as your pigment changes, you still need to update your foundation as well. You, you may not need to if really? you're using a foundation close enough to your own skin tone. Even if you're a couple shades darker? If you're a couple shades darker, yeah, we might need to change that. But if you just warm it up with a bronzer sometimes, gotcha. you'll be fine. That's an easy uh, way to save money. Absolutely. And there's a lot of foundations out there now that are skin tone adjusting. Um, so even like there's some tinted moisturizers, the BB creams that we've talked about before that are kind of your all-in-one, they they, they're skin tone adjusting, they're going to be a lighter coverage, but that kind of alleviates having to change gotcha. your foundation of several times throughout yeah, the summer. Yeah, because that's, that's expensive. It is, definitely, when you're spending, you know, between 30 and $60 on a bottle of exactly. foundation. Next would be blush. Um, there's a few tricks of picking your perfect blush. Okay. Um, when you have a more neutral skin tone like you and I, we can kind of go whatever way we feel like. We can wear, you know, whatever goes with our outfit for the day. We can play around. Exactly. Uh, if you have a little bit more of a yellowy skin tone like Sam does, or if you happen to be have a little bit more red pigment in your skin, if you take your finger and you squeeze it, you'll see what this color turns. Okay. And that's going to be kind of like your perfect color of blush. I never knew this. Okay. And then there's also some other mishaps of putting it on. Now, for Sam today, since she has this beautiful color blouse on, we didn't want to fight with that. So we didn't do pink. And you don't always have to match with your clothes. But when you have such a distinct color on, you don't want to go completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. So when putting on your blush, old school was we put it on the apples of our cheek. Now What's we want school. New school is uh -oh. we want to make Learning sure that we're getting here. we're getting this contour. So okay. we're gonna go right down. Blend it in more instead of you just having it look it to, like two apples. We don't want it to look like two <laughs> apples. And especially when you get to that over 40 stage, then you look like you just have two big round things on your cheek and it tends to sink into fine lines and oh, wrinkles. Yeah. And not that's good. not what we want to do. Another beauty mishap we're gonna, we always talk about is powder. And I don't have a powder out here with me, but we know how I feel about powder. But even if you do feel like you need to powder, only powder the areas that get oily. You're going to do your nose, your forehead, your chin. Never anything around the eyes. Um, anything around the eyes is going to enhance any fine lines and wrinkles, so we Ooh. definitely don't want to go there. Good tip, um, good tip. And, and the last one for summer, 
picking your right color bronzer. Um, just because there's so many different ones out there, this one happens to be pretty dark and a little bit more of an orangey tone. And this would be with somebody who has a deeper skin tone. For Sam today, we chose this lighter one that has a few different pigments in it and gives you more of a luminous glow. I love that. As I know, isn't it beautiful? I put a little bit on my finger. You it's could, amazing. I mean, you could take it and you could use it very pretty as like a brow highlight. But oh, like we so were talking pretty. about. But this is just going to look really nice on the cheek without making her look like we talked about earlier, snooky-ish. You are such a makeup magician. See, look at I'm how pretty it. that is. Yes. So very pretty. It's not going to look overly <laughs> done up or she's not going to look too bronzed. So, and especially on her wedding day, we don't want her to look too tan. Yes, and congratulations again. Your wedding is in two weeks. Yes. You are a stunning person, so I'm sure you will be a stunning bride, sure especially if Natalie's doing your makeup. <laughs> hey, Natalie, Thanks. really quick, where can folks go if they want to see you or get a consult consultation? Um, BridalMakeupByNatalie.com. All my contact information is on there, and my Facebook and my Twitter are on there as, all, as well, so you can find me on those. Yeah, you have a Facebook fan page now. I you do, have to like I do. Page. Like my page, Natalie Parecki Makeup Artist. Okay, we will see you back here next Monday with Sounds more good. makeup tips.